Thank you, Lisa. <clears throat> Good morning, church. How are you post-Pride parade and event? Okay. You guys are doing great then. Good. <laughs> um, however, I'm not. I'm going to make apologies for my voice. I'm um, sounding like a heavy metal rock star right now. It kind of comes and goes. So um, sing loud and sing proud as we uh, join our voices to sing, Oh, Happy Day. Rise as you're able. Oh, happy day, oh, happy day, when Jesus washed, when Jesus washed, my Jesus washed, he washed my sins away, it was a happy, happy day. Oh happy day, oh happy day, when Jesus was, my Jesus was, oh when he was, he washed my sins away, it was a happy, happy day. He taught me how to watch, fight and pray, fight and pray, and live rejoicing every Happy day, oh happy day, when Jesus washed, oh when he washed, my Jesus washed, he washed my sins away, it was a happy, happy day. He taught me how to watch, fight and pray, fight and pray, and live rejoicing every, every day. Every day, oh happy day, oh happy day, oh happy day, it was a happy, happy day, oh happy day, oh happy day, oh happy day. Day. Oh, happy day. Amen. Thank you. It looks like we have a disco thing going on here in, uh, in the corner. We just need to put up a disco ball and we'll be all set. Well, good morning and welcome to Metropolitan Community Church. I'm Pastor Paul. Uh, Pastor Judy is taking the day off today because she was at uh, the parade and at the booth, uh, so she's a little worn out. So um, you've got me. You're stuck with me. A um, couple of announcements. First of all, we want to um, uh, say thank you to anyone and everyone who participated in, in the parade and in the booth. It was a lot of work and also Los Ranchos Pride the week before. So would you just give everybody a, a thank you? I notice that many of them are staying home today. We're down one person in the booth, so please be kind and gentle if uh, there's a little hiccup someplace. Um, last announcement, or one more announcement. 
Gay Men's Chorus, our Pride concert is coming up. It's a Relio. It's a Latinx Pride celebration, and it is going to be um, Friday, June 21st in Santa Fe at the Lensic, and Saturday the 22nd at 7.30, and Sunday the 23rd at 3. And do you want to say something about Kinky Boots? So part of the reason I'm hoarse is not because of Pride, it's because I've been singing for two weeks, almost solid, for a production of Kinky Boots, playing at Musical Theater Southwest. I believe there's some posters that have QR codes that take you to, right to the link where you can buy tickets. It's a wonderful show. It's a feel-good show. It celebrates us as a people, and I hope that you can make it. This weekend sold out. Next weekend's going fast, and the weekend after that's going fast. So don't delay, okay? Thank you. Oh, yes. I'm also in a show at the Albuquerque Little Theater right now that runs this weekend and next weekend uh, called Head Over Heels, and it's uh, it's got a lot of, uh, of LGBT themes, uh, to say the least, and uh, crazy music by the Go-Go's, if you're familiar with the Go-Go's, and um, the story is hilarious, so if you have a chance to come see that one too, come see both. They're both great productions for uh, Pride Month, I think. So a lot going on, yes. And don't forget to register your attendance in the Blue Books if you haven't already. And if you're here for the first time or haven't filled out a welcome card, uh, they're uh, in the seat pockets in front. Uh, fill one out and give that to me after service and we have a gift just to say thank you for coming. Um, we have something very special happening tomorrow. Somebody is turning 39 and that would be Ted. 88, he's gonna be 88. Yeah. And to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Ted, happy birthday to you. And now would you join your heart with mine as we go to God in prayer to begin our service. Holy and loving God, we thank you for bringing us here today. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to gather as proud and open and inclusive and loving and compassionate and kind people. A place where everyone is welcome and everyone has a seat at the table. And we ask that you would bless this time that it might speak to us, that it might inspire us, that it might feed that which is to plen re diminished inside of us. And we give this time to you, and we pray these things in your holy name. Amen. So we're continuing our series coming out from the Bible, where we're looking at five stories that affirm our identities and self-expressions. And this week, we look at a covenant which is a contract made between people and God. And this particular covenant is made between two very different men. And in it, we see a love that transcends all boundaries. I have a reading from George. George, a reading from 1 Samuel chapter 18 and chapter 20. When David had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was bound to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Saul took him that day and would not let him return to his father's house. Then Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as his own soul. Jonathan stripped, stripped himself of the robe that he was wearing and gave it to David and his armor and even his sword and his bow and his belt. David went out and was successful whenever Saul sent him. As a result, Saul sent him over the army and all the people, even the servants of Saul approved. Jonathan said to David, by the Lord, the God of Israel, 
when I have sounded out my father about this time tomorrow or on the third day, if he is well disposed toward David, shall I not then send and disclose it to you? Thus Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, May the Lord seek out the enemies of David. Jonathan made David swear again by his love for him, for he loved him as he loved his own life. Happy Pride, everyone. <laughs> So I don't know if anyone had a chance to celebrate Pride Fest in Albuquerque yesterday. I uh, overly celebrated Pride Fest yesterday. So um, I'm having a fun day on three and a half hours of sleep, so pray for me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, I think this is part of where our, our prayer could lead in. Uh, you know, for a lot of people, Pride is not just a celebration. It's not just a, a place to, to be safe, but it's actually, um, for some people's journey, it's it's it's. It could be they're coming out. It could be um, not only opening the door to self-expression and to their own um, their own true selves, but um, it, it's, it could be a, an awesome and scary journey. So you would think in today's world that we um, wouldn't have to struggle through uh, the process of coming out to living our authentic selves, but. Um, it is still a, a thing out there in this world, and I think that's one thing we could pray on today. So um, let's all just turn ourselves, close your eyes if you feel that is helpful for you, and just be in this space. Precious and loving God, we come to you together not only as individuals, but as a community. We stand together, we pray together, we worship together, and uh, we just are in community with one another. It is our prayer, God, to you that through this community that we have created, through the, the extended family that we create in our journey, that we not only live our authentic self, but we are an example to living our, our authentic self. God, we pray that you give us the strength to live each and every day fulfilled, continually growing in our spiritual journey, in our life's endeavors, knowing that with you all things are possible. God, we pray that you give us the strength to have our heart continually open and ready to receive people into our lives. For the people who are struggling and challenged, suffering, confused, frustrated, all the things that help to shackle someone, we ask you today to hear our prayers to help them be relieved of these things. Let people have the strength through you, God, to let these things go. God, help us to be the channel of your love, your peace, your joy, and your hope. Help us to always know that through you, through your Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, that all things are continually possible. And it is your many names we pray. Amen. build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live a place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive built of hopes and dreams and vision rock of faith and vault of grace hear the love of christ shout in division all are welcome all are welcome all are welcome in this place let us build a house where speak and words are strong and true where all God's children dare to seek to dream God's reign anew 
Here the cross shall stand as witness and a symbol of God's grace. Here as one we claim the faith of Jesus. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build the house where all are named their songs and visions heard and loved and treasures taught and claimed as words within the word built of tears and cries of laughter prayers of faith and songs of grace let this house proclaim from floor to rafter all are welcome all are welcome all are welcome this place. amen i remember the first time i heard that song was at a general conference at mcc Several thousand queer people singing that song. It was very, very moving. So we're continuing our, um, oh, happy Pride, everyone. And if you went to the festivities, I hope that you enjoyed yourself and didn't get too overheated. And if you were at our worship service at Los Ranchos Pride last week, um, I'm going to apologize to you because I'm going to subject you to the same jokes that I shared there. Uh, so if you need to use the bathroom, now's a good time. Uh, so I keep asking what LGBT stands for, but I can't get a straight answer. <laughs> a son comes up to his parents and says, Mom and Dad, I'm gay. And the mom stares really hard at the dad. And dad clenches his fists. And mom says, don't you dare, don't you dare say it. And dad starts breaking out into a sweat. He's just bursting. And mom glares even harder. Dad can't take it anymore. He says, hi, gay, I'm dad. <laughs> One day during a flight, a passenger was getting unruly. A steward comes to deal with the situation, and the passenger exclaims, where I'm from, I'm a princess, and you owe me respect. And the steward replies, girl, I'm a queen worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> you like that, huh? <laughs> Uh, just a couple more. How many gay men does it take to screw in a light bulb? <laughs> Two. One to screw in the bulb and the other to stand back and say, fabulous. <laughs> if a trans person and a bisexual get together, does that make a BLT? <laughs> and what do lesbians bring to a second date? You haul. <laughs> what do gay men bring to a second date? Their boyfriend. <laughs> their new boyfriend. Uh, so I hope that I've either amused or offended pretty much everyone here today. Uh, if I miss someone, it's Trump's fault. I have no idea why, but just from now on, I'm blaming everything on him. So our readings today are from the Jewish scripture, the Jewish Testament, the book of 1 Samuel, and there are a couple of brief excerpts from the story of David and Jonathan. Now Samuel was a prophet, and the two books bearing his name tell a very long and complicated and sometimes contradictory story. It tells the story of a time after the Jews had uh, settled in the Promised Land, and at that time they had judges that ruled over the people. But the people looked around at the nations around them, and they all had kings. So they cried out to Samuel that they wanted a king too. So God directs Samuel to a man named Saul. Now, for some reason, the writer of Samuel uh, just points out that Saul was the most handsome man in all of Israel. In fact, the author mentions handsomeness of several men in the story. I think we have a little family thing going on there. Saul starts out pretty good in his reign. Things are going okay. He wins some battles. 
He makes sacrifices to God, but then things start to head south. He starts to do things his own way rather than following God's law. So this gets God upset. God tells Samuel that Saul should no longer be the king and that he is to anoint someone else. So he's directed to the house of a man named Jesse. And Jesse has several sons. And he brings all of them but one before Samuel, one at a time. Each one, God tells Samuel, no, this is not the one. And he gets to the last, and it's still not the one. So Samuel asks if there's any other sons. Yes, there's one more, the youngest, but he's out tending the sheep. So Samuel has him brought before him, and God says he's the one. He's to be the next king of Israel. And following that, in the next chapter, we have the story of David and Goliath, where David uh, fells a, a giant uh, with just a, a sling and some stones. And so then the next scene is the drama that we heard in our first reading. Now Saul's son is Jonathan. So Jonathan is a prince. And this is the first time that they've ever met. Oh, and by the way, the writer describes both Jonathan and David as handsome too. They were the other guys. So picture it. A prince meets a shepherd who is also a hero, and their souls are bound together. And then Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as his own soul. Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that he was wearing and gave it to David and his armor and even his sword and his bow and his belt. Today, this would be like Prince William falling in love with the janitor. Now, when I was told this story in Sunday school, they told me that David and Jonathan were good friends. Good friends. Anybody else get that? Special friends, yes. Um, that's not how I read it. Why would a prince take off all the symbols of his rank and office and give them to a good-looking shepherd? if there wasn't something more than just friendship there. Now, David is very gifted and also uh, very handsome, as he said. And Saul eventually gets jealous of David and even tries to kill him. But Jonathan, his beloved, keeps him safe by warning him and even by uh, working out signals so that David would know when it was safe to come back. And in the second part of the reading, Jonathan makes a covenant with the house of David. And he says, he made him swear again by his love for him, for he loved him as his own life. Later on in Samuel, the end of 1 Samuel, Saul and Jonathan are slain in the battle, are killed in battle. And David laments, Jonathan lies slain upon your high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. Greatly beloved were you to me. Your love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. Now, there's no indication that their relationship was sexual in nature, but there is clearly more than a friendship going on. You see, a covenant is a, is a three-way contract. It's between people or two people, and God is, stands as the witness. It's a sacred contract. It's a different contract than a legal contract. The thing that binds a covenant together isn't the, word, the legal words. You don't go to a judge and say, somebody broke their covenant. It's the integrity of the people and God watching. God saying, you said this before me, so now you are going to live it out. When I marry people, I'm proclaiming to them and to their witnesses their marriage covenant. And so that's what David and Jonathan have done. They've made promises to each other before God. We saw the same thing in last week's reading from Ruth. Ruth pledges to stay with her widowed mother-in-law, Naomi, makes a covenant with her. Then at the end of the book, Ruth has a son, and the community recognizes that child as Naomi's because of the covenant and the devotion to, between those two women. And, by the way, the name of Ruth's child is Jesse, who just so happens to be the father of David. So Jesus was a descendant of David. 
So there are two same gender couples in the lineage of Jesus. And in fact, the lineage of Jesus begins with Jesse. And so these two covenanted same gender relationships are the foundation for where we would get Jesus. But they didn't teach you that in, high school, in Sunday school either, did they? So in this series, we're looking at stories or passages through our eyes, through eyes that see things differently, in order to not only find ourselves in the Bible, but to learn about who God chooses to work in and through. And what I see in David and Jonathan are two people who love each other. And there's that simple saying going around these days, love is love. You can't, love doesn't take any particular form. It doesn't go by any particular set of rules. And one thing that's very noticeable about the Jewish scriptures is that it doesn't sugarcoat its leaders, their leaders. It doesn't glorify them and set them up on a pedestal to be admired. Instead, it shows their strengths and their flaws, their successes and their failures. Saul gets insanely jealous of David and throws a spear at him, and David would later lie, cheat on his wife, and kill his enemies. But he also played beautiful music on the lyre and wrote poetry. In the book of Psalms are attributed to him. The title of my sermon comes from one of the banners we had on our pride float. Become the best you. If we believe that God loves us just the way we are, and in this church we believe that, that doesn't mean that we can't continue to grow and learn. And in fact, that's what you want when you love someone. You want them to flourish. You want them to have all that they need to become the highest and best versions of themselves. That means sometimes we have to take a look at ourselves and see what needs to let go, what's holding us back from that becoming. This month we celebrate our diversity. We take joy in being this fabulous rainbow people. As a community, as a movement, we have changed and grown over the years in many ways. And may we continue as we seek to be the best that we can be. There's a lovely song called Everything Possible. It was written by Fred Small and recorded in the uh, late 80s by a, um, a pro-gay male group called The Flirtations. And I'd like to share a portion of it with you in closing. You can be anybody you want to be. You can love whomever you will. You can travel the country where your heart leads. And I will love you still. You can live by yourself. You can gather friends around. You can choose one special one. And the only measure of your words and your deeds will be the love you leave behind when you're done. There are girls who grow up strong and bold. There are boys quiet and kind. Some race on ahead, some follow behind. Some go in their own way in time. Some women love women. Some men love men, some raise children, and some never do. You can dream all the day, reaching the end, never reaching the end of everything possible for you. Don't be rattled by names, by taunts, by games, but seek out spirits and true. And if you give your friends the best part of yourself, they will give the same back to you. Everything is possible for us, for you, for this church, for our community. And love and devotion and covenant is what is going to help us grow and become the best that we can be. Would you pray with me? Loving God, we thank you. We thank you for the word that you give to us in which we see ourselves sometimes hidden. Sometimes we have to look at the words through different eyes and we appreciate and thank you for the imagination that we have that enables us to do that. And we pray that love, your love, would win, not only here in this church, but in our world, in our country, and in those war-torn places, may love somehow, some way prevail. 
This we pray in your many names. Amen and amen. Nothing I have that your love won't offer. Nothing I've done that your grace won't cover. It's not over till you say so. You are faithful, God, you're faithful. The cross is all the confidence I need. Your love won't give up on me. You never make a promise you don't keep. Your love won't give up on me. Calling me back to the place where I started I lost my way but I'm not forgotten It's not over till you say so You are faithful, God you're faithful The cross is all the confidence I need your love won't give up on me you never make a promise you don't keep your love won't give up on me your love won't give up on me No matter how far I run, I run into your love. And when I'm falling apart, you won't let me go. No matter how far I run, I run into your love. And when I'm falling apart, you won't let me go. No matter how far I run, I run. The cross is all the confidence I need. Your love won't give up on me. You never make a promise you don't keep. Your love won't give up on me. The cross is all the confidence I need. Your love won't give up on me. You never make a promise you don't keep. Your love won't give up on me. Your love won't give up on me. Your love won't give up on me. That sounded wonderful. Yesterday, we hustled. I mean, we hustled. We gave away 800 Twinkies. I know, right? I was like, Twinkies? Who gives away Twinkies? Well, we do. MCC Albuquerque does. So that was exciting. We also gave, now, what was the other count? 
Come over here. Come over here. And About five to two hundred refugees. Yeah. So we were out there. Another five hundred people came. So the whole thing. I mean, we were out there. We were hustling. So what I need you guys to do is pray that those seeds that we planted yesterday walk in this church, yes. because this is a safe place, and this is this is for them also. Okay. So uh, it's not time now to share what the Lord has given up to us and think about how wonderful it is to have a place like MCC Albuquerque where we could come here and share and be who we are. So, Lord, I just ask that you continue to bless us and that you uh, just bring us and that you give us the vision that you have for this church. Amen. break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, oh Christians are so very proud to be called a Christian, to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. But it wasn't always easy for Jesus, and we know it's not always easy for us. But we do know by the gift of this table that we will be supported in that journey that we are on. We remember the night. friends, as is given to each of us today, and he said, take this, all of you, 
and eat it. For this is my body, which is broken, that is being given up for each and every one of us. And when the meal was over, he gave the cup to his friends as is given to each of us today. And he said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is my life, which is being poured out for each and every one of you. All I ask is that you remember me. Will you join me in prayer? O oh, most gracious and loving God, we pray that your Holy Spirit will make these gifts and our lives holy, that they may be joy, peace, love, and happiness to all those that we come into contact with. Lord, we pray that you will bless us and that you will make us your rainbow people, a people set apart, a holy nation, we thank you for all the many gifts that you have given us. And we thank you especially, Lord Jesus, for this table, for the nourishment we receive. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. At this Metropolitan Community Church and every Metropolitan Community Church throughout the world, the table is set for all people. You need not be a member of this church or any. Come and receive the gifts that God has provided for us.
Most gracious and loving God, we thank you. We thank you for calling us out of darkness into your marvelous light and to making us a people holy and set apart. Help us to always shine the rainbow that you have given each of us that we may continue to spread your love to others. And we make this prayer through Jesus, our risen Lord. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. Um, I hope you've received a blessing. I certainly enjoyed that message. Thank you, Paul. Rise as you're able, and we're going to sing Friend of God. Who am I that you are mindful of me, that you hear me when I call? Is it true that you are thinking of me, how you love me? It's amazing. friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. You call me friend. Who am I that you are mindful of me? How you love me when I call. Who am I that are thinking of me, how you love me. It's amazing. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. You call me friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. You call me friend. God Almighty, Lord of glory, you have called me friend. God Almighty, Lord. of God. I am a friend of God. You call me friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. You call me friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. You call me friend. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. It's nice to see some faces returning. And we thank you for being here. We don't have refreshments today. Rose has taken the day off. Much needed, right? <laughs> so go enjoy the day. Be out and be proud. May God bless you, may God's face and countenance shine upon you, and be gracious to you today and for all days. Be at peace. And you too. Bye. 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 Bye.